Picture this. You live in a besieged territory under occupation. You're hungry. Soldiers at the border won't let anything in or out unless they're forced to, and that includes food. You also live under the constant threat of violence. Schools, hospitals, places many of us take for granted are underfunded or have been destroyed. Electricity and fuel are restricted by your closest neighbors. Often, there isn't any at all. And unless you have exactly the right documents, you can't hope to leave. Welcome to Gaza, before the war. Gaza on a good day. I'm Dani Navogeda. This is Pinchpoint, where politics and geography collide. Let's take a moment to imagine how Palestinians were feeling in the days leading up to the war. Actually, you don't have to imagine it. The research has been done. Just one week before Hamas launched its attack on Israel, Gallup wrapped up its poll of Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. The interviews took place between July and September 2023. Here's what they found. Anger was already on the rise. The poll found that 44 percent of Palestinians in Gaza said they experienced a lot of anger the day before they were surveyed. These are levels not seen since 2018, when there were weekly protests demanding the right for Palestinians to return to the land they lost when Israel became a state. Over the decades, the protests have never really stopped. Protests against poverty, protests appealing for dignity, protests for freedom. Gallup also found that most Palestinians surveyed don't trust U.S. President Joe Biden to negotiate peace between Palestine and Israel. Actually, an incredible 8 in 10 Palestinians doubted there could ever be permanent peace between Israel and Palestine. As for living standards, well, Gaza was never rich, but the recent polls suggest people were struggling to buy food. Before the war, people were getting by, but just barely, depending on handouts, aid, charity, but rarely able to rely on themselves. The ability to afford a place to live had also reached a crisis point, with a third of people in Gaza worried about finding a roof over their head. According to Gallup, two-thirds of people in Gaza could be classified as moderately or highly vulnerable. And to repeat, that was before the current war. The shocking thing is, very little is new here. The United Nations, no less, had been warning for years that Gaza could become unlivable by 2020. Half of the people in Gaza are 18 years old or younger. Before the war, hope for their futures had slumped. And faced by all the rubble of destroyed homes and failed peace initiatives, the older generations share in their pessimism. Only about a third of people in Gaza will remember these pictures. This handshake in 1993 on the lawn of the White House between the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, Yasser Arafat, and Israel's Prime Minister, Yitzhak Rabin. A year later, they received Nobel Peace Prizes. Now fast forward to the day before October 7, when Hamas broke out of Gaza and attacked Israel. Gaza gripped in a chokehold for decades. Human Rights Watch has described the territory as little more than an open-air prison. Because without Israel's say-so, no one can go in and no one can leave. Let's look at what's been going on. Gaza is bordered on the west by the Mediterranean Sea. To the south, there's Egypt, the rest surrounded by Israel. You can drive from top to bottom in less than an hour. 365 square kilometers surrounded by the sea or a barrier like this. For the people who live there, there were just two ways in, the same two ways out. To the south, the Rafah crossing into Egypt. To the north, the Erez crossing into Israel. Let's start here. Erez is a huge barn of a place, fortified and built to process 45,000 Palestinians a day to go from Gaza to jobs in Israel. 
Just getting from one side to the other is a 20 minute walk. People are scanned, bags are searched, and it's all monitored by Israelis behind blast proof glass. Nothing gets in or out without them knowing about it. Rafah is run by Egypt, and only foreign nationals and dual citizens can usually get through here. Egypt sees Palestinians leaving Gaza as a potential security threat. And the Egyptian government is no friend of Hamas. Before the 2023 war, commercial trucks could enter Gaza through Rafah and aid through the nearby Israeli crossing at Karam Abu Salim. All that changed when the war started. As crises have come and gone, other crossings have been shut down, never to reopen. Long before the current war, Israel has used the crossings as taps they can turn on and off. Just to repeat, the Israelis want to know exactly what's going into Gaza. That's to the point that there have been claims Israel kept Palestinians there on a calorie-controlled diet. By limiting food supplies to the bare caloric minimum, the aim was to put pressure on Hamas after it gained power in 2007. Israel has blocked hated Gaza ever since. Here's the United Nations former humanitarian chief talking about it 13 years ago. We have called and continue to call, as a Secretary General has done very consistently um, in recent months, for the relaxation of this uh, blockade on Gaza and the entry of, um, of goods in a normal way um, to allow reconstruction and to allow the Gazans to live uh, something uh, more like a, a normal life rather than the existence which they have at the moment. The aim was once to build Gaza into a Palestinian state. An airport was built. Optimism, if not high, at least existed. Now Rabin and Arafat are long dead. The airport has been destroyed by Israeli forces and only pessimism, poverty and desperation remain. The so-called Oslo Accords that Arafat and Rabin signed 30 odd years ago were supposed to be the dawn of a two-state solution. I'll get into that in another episode. Now, hope and permanent peace seems elusive and mistrust has grown. Gaza is besieged like never before. Gaza city has a harbor, but the Israelis have dictated that boats can only go so far. There's a fishing zone limit, and most fishers don't have the fuel to even get that far. Also, in this permitted space, there aren't enough fish to go around. And these people live on the Mediterranean. It all means that on the Israeli side of the border, people can expect to, on average, live to 83 years of age. In Gaza, people die 10 years younger. A 10-year difference for people separated by as many meters. Separated by two border crossings, condemning more than 2 million people to a life of misery.